Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Bex. I'm mum to a little boy called Finley, who's 18 months old, and I make videos about parenting, lifestyle, home, anything really to do with mum life. So those of you who watch my videos regularly will know that a few months back I did a Mother Booker's book review of Steve Bidulph's Raising Boys, and whilst I really enjoyed the book, I felt there were a few sort of areas that it was showing its age with. It was written originally in 1997 and it was due for an update. Happily, Steve Bidulph got in touch. He had seen my review and wondered if I would be interested in reviewing his revised and updated edition of the book, Raising Boys in the 21st Century. And of course, I was really excited too. So I have read the book from cover to cover and don't know if you can see in there but I have made copious notes and I've just tried to sort of distill what I've learned from both sort of books into a handy video where if you are a bi mum and you're a first time mum like me and you're wondering what to expect with raising boys, I thought this would be a really useful video. So without further ado, let's get on to the 10 things that I have learned about raising boys in the 21st century. Okay, so number one, the first thing that I have learned about raising boys are there are three sort of distinct stages of boyhood. It is important to point out that whilst there are three stages, they aren't rigid and boys will sort of shift between the stages organically and gradually. Stage one covers birth to the age of six. Although the boy's father may play a large role within his life, the boy's main focus is his mother. Stage two is between the ages of six and 14. At this stage, boys are actively seeking out what it means to be a man. And then stage three is from 14 to adult. And it's at this point that having different male role models of different generations is really crucial to help your boy to sort of complete his journey into manhood. The second thing I've learned is about the role of testosterone. One thing that I found particularly shocking is that the role of testosterone plays a significant part within boys' development from birth, not just from puberty. So Steve Bidoff refers in his book to Alan Shaw, who found that testosterone causes a developmental delay within boys. He found that boys lag behind girls in developmental skills at this age by as much as 20 months. Number three, the third thing that I found out about raising boys is the change that happens around the age of four is an actual shift as a mini testosterone surge and luteinizing hormones are released. And Steve Bridolph believes that it's these two small but significant changes that signal a shift in boys' behavior around the age of four. Boys are still developing their gross motor skills. So they are still learning really the physicality of their body and how it works. And it makes it very difficult for them to sit still. And in general, boys are still very physical at this stage. So just at the point where they're expected to sit down, concentrate, learn, sit still, it's not necessarily possible for all boys to be able to do this. Some of them will still be developing those skills and that isn't their fault and it's something that should really be noted within the education system really I think. So as parents or carers what does this significant change at the age of four mean for us in terms of parenting and behaviour? Well as I've said it means that boys will find it difficult to sit still for long periods of time, it means that they will be very physical, possibly quite boisterous um, difficult to tire out and they need lots of space um, such as the park and outdoor activities to burn off that energy and release it. Another thing that it means is that boys might have a very instinctive physical reaction to a situation rather than being able to articulate how they feel about something. So you might find that temper tantrums peak around this point or they lash out at a sibling or if they're excited that they have to run around the room and show their excitement in that very physical way. Things that you can do to help with this stage are to really encourage free play. I read the book The Danish Way of Parenting which I'll leave a link to around here somewhere and in that book the idea of play as a way of developing learning skills and cooperation skills is sort of central to the Danish way of parenting and I think let's steal that idea from them really 
it's important for all children to be able to express themselves through play, whether it's imaginative play or physical, but really harnessing that idea of just having a free reign to play and do exactly what you want for a period of time is exactly what boys at this stage need to be able to just release that energy that they've got. Because boys' communication and developmental skills might still be slightly delayed at this point compared to girls, it also might mean that they need help to manage big, strong emotions such as anger or fear or excitement. Uh, they may not necessarily be able to articulate how they feel. So the fourth thing I've learned, just when you thought you'd escaped from the full on fours, you might find yourself running into the emotional eights. Steve Biddulf explained that at this stage you might find that your boy suddenly becomes more tearful, more outwardly emotional, more irritable, and again it's down to hormones. In the book, Steve Biddulph explains a process called adrenarch, which is the thing that's behind this change in behaviour. In boys, puberty hits between the age of 10 and 13, and around the age of 8, there's sort of a, a practice run uh, of making sure that all the hormones are functioning as they should be. So how do you navigate this stage? Well, it comes down, again, to being understanding. You aren't going to win all the battles, so just pick and choose them wisely. Be open, um, explain to your boy that this is, his body is gearing up to start that process and it's nothing to be frightened of. And just try and reassure him at the stage and ask him how it feels when these emotions bubble up to the surface. Are there any sort of physical or emotional clues that he has before um, any emotions sort of boil over? Again, this is where physicality can help. So practicing things like mindfulness or yoga can have really, really a positive effects in all children, to be honest. Number five, boys need to cry. Crying is a normal part of being human. There's more scientific research that's been published to show just how important crying is. Scientific studies have concluded that crying is the body's way of healing itself. When we experience loss, our brain is sort of wounded, if you like, by changes that happen to the neural connections within our brain. And crying releases endorphins that sort of heal those connections. I think it's really important that boys are raised to understand the importance of crying for being able to heal after something upsetting has happened. What can you do to help normalise crying then? You should never tell your boy to stop crying um, or make him feel ashamed for crying. You can always reassure with words or with actions such as a hug. I'd say what's happened is very sad and I'm here for you. Or can not only normalise crying and sadness if you are prepared to show it yourself. So if you need to cry then openly show that and uh, don't be frightened of showing that don't apologize for it and dads are other sort of important male figures in your son's life should do the same okay so the sixth thing that i've learned then is that boys need gentle parenting you don't need to toughen up your boy and you can also discipline him without being harsh and i think sometimes it's easy to forget with boys that they are just as sensitive as, as girls are and I think they flourish with gentle parenting. So if we are understanding and gentle and try to understand situations through our children's eyes, we are far more likely to instill discipline from a place of love rather than from a place of anger. Another sort of cornerstone of gentle parenting is to always give a way out or a way back from behaviour that we don't want to see. Try to avoid ultimatums and if a consequence needs to be given, try to give it as a natural consequence of an action. So for example, if you keep saying don't leave cups on the floor with drinks in them or else they might get spilled and then a drink does get spilled, then a natural consequence of that would be that they would have to clean it up. Natural consequences are just an easier way of trying to show that a way of behaviour isn't necessarily the best choice. Number seven, boys need structure. So while this might seem contradictory from what I've said with gentle parenting, Steve Biddulf explains that boys can feel insecure and jostle for position and start power play 
if they feel that there isn't enough structure within a relationship or a situation. Boys can act tough to sort of cover that fear, um, but if someone is clearly in charge, then they relax. So the three things that boys need to know are who's in charge, what are the rules, and will the rules be fairly applied? When it comes to rules and being fairly applied, it's really useful to sit down with either your partner or your family members and work out what your sort of family rules are and what the consequences will be if those sort of rules aren't followed. It's really important to be on the same page so you aren't played off against each other. Number eight, a natural antidote to this sort of boisterous nature of boys is rough and tumble. You'll often find that boys will play fight with older brothers or uncles and it's a really important time for them to bond. As a mum, my heart is sometimes in my mouth when Dan is sort of rough and tumble with Finley, but it's how boys and men show affection for each other and it's something that you shouldn't quash. During this bonding time is a really important lesson that boys need to learn and that lesson is self-control. Through rough housing and rough and tumble play your boy is learning that he can be strong and excited but he is also having to learn where and when to back off. As a man, it's really important that you learn that you can't use your physical strength ill-advisedly and this is the learning ground that boys will use. So warning signs that a play fight is about to turn serious, shutting jaw, furrowed eyebrows, determined sort of look, flushed cheeks, pursed lips. Whoever the guy is that's playing rough and tumble should step in at this point to cool the scenario down a bit. An easy way of doing that is to say, you know, your body is precious my body is precious too and we can't play this game if someone's going to get hurt so we needed a few rules which are no elbowing no punching no kneeing do you understand and can you handle that saying can you handle that to a boy is a really good way of trying to get them to sort of step up to the mark and it sounds like a challenge that they've got to accept rather than it being that they are being reprimanded so number nine boys and adhd ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder and in the book Steve Bidolf discusses psychiatrist Gabor Mates. Gabor was a Holocaust baby, he was born in a concentration camp, he has ADHD and his three children also have it too. And in his book Scattered, it is his belief that he is backed up with research that he believes ADHD is a result of trauma or stress. He believes he can be genetically predisposed to having ADHD but something actually has to trigger it off. And he has noticed that the areas of the cortex in the brain are thinner in people who have ADHD. The cortex is the part of the brain that's responsible for our ability to be uh, calm and to remain focused and to feel sort of secure. So he advocates that parents should be well supported during their child's first year of life. As between the ages of 6 and 12 months, this is a particularly uh, crucial time for that part of the brain to develop. Okay, so number 10, the final one, boys and school. Going back to what I said earlier about boys, with them taking longer to develop certain skills, that is going to have an impact on their work at school. Steve Biddulph has noted that around the age of five, when serious schooling starts in the UK and Australia, boys' brain development is six to 12 months behind girls at this stage. It can be especially delayed in things like fine motor skills, so the ability to hold and control a pencil and um, the ability to cut with scissors um, carefully and safely. They are still going to be developing those gross motor skills so they will again find it difficult to sit still for long periods of time or will react very physically and need to sort of move around. So what should you do if you feel your boy isn't ready for school? It would be advisable to speak to your child's nursery or a childminder, just to see what's expected of them on entry into primary school, things that they should be able to do for themselves, behaviour expectations, development expectations, and from that try and gauge if your boy is ready. In the UK, if your child is born between April the 1st and the 31st of August, they are classed as a summer born child, then you are legally entitled to delay their entry into school for a year. If you feel that would give your boy a bit of extra time to develop, then use that right. 
I'll leave a link to the Department for Education's website. So if you do feel that would be beneficial, then I would re really recommend looking into forest schools if there are any in your area. Forest schools are a Scandinavian educational idea and they teach the curriculum through nature and through being outside. So if you have a boy who flourishes with being physical and being outside and having just a practical approach to learning, then forest school could be the way to go. The second thing I would do during this year is find different ways to develop your boys' communication skills. All boys can have slightly different levels of testosterone and studies have shown that if your boy has a high level of testosterone, he will take longer to acquire communication skills. Targeted ways that you can improve his communication skills. Reading time can be a really special time to bond with your child. So going for trips to the library to pick books out together and getting snuggly at bedtime and reading them, making sure that there's soft lighting and that the room is nice and cozy. Maybe consider creating a book nook in a corner somewhere. When you're reading, try and do the silly voices or do the actions. Make it fun. When you're reading, try and ask questions. They help with prediction skills. Strong readers are always good at being able to predict what might happen next in a story. With general communication skills, take the time to explain how things work. Ask your boy if he can explain something to you. Use that opportunity for him to show you how to do it and for him to explain along the way. In general, try and speak back to your son one step ahead of where his current stage is at. I hope this video has been valuable and insightful and if it has, please comment below with what you've found valuable and please share it with another parent who might find it useful. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!